next. I'm so excited. Like I do not want to be anywhere else in the world right now mm. than back home in Perth. And I've worked actually that, more than that. You know, that makes me a little bit sad <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just living the best moment. There's so much going on. In you can always cancel your flight. Then. No, I made it. My, my, my wife, couch is free. My wife is waiting. My wife is waiting. And and that brings me to another story because I want to be able to to. We had this conversation as well on Saturday, and uh, I really want to be able to come back and and show my kids at some point in the future uh, what how what have we done together and uh, really this generation that is coming need to understand the value of cooperation this egocentrism that we are all uh, uh, accustomed to has to change so uh, Perth right now is just that that's a beautiful example and I'm very happy that I had the chance the last two months to to, to grow together with the city with you and everybody who is out there just trying to get things together just don't be afraid to connect to call check these guys from Holonic they're doing a great job uh, there's many little startups trying to to um, you know to go go against the waves because uh, there's also a very strong force out there that we have to deal with which is is the status quo I guess but that's exactly the beauty of this experience. We all need to cooperate and work together to get these things working. Beautiful, man. I'm gonna pull you back to we'll, we'll wrap out circular pitch. What, yep. what what would Paul? How would Paul Hogan uh, deal with that question? Did you ever come up with an idea? Or I know we got into sort of deep dialogue. <laughs> <Yeah. there. laughs> I know you sort of said symbols and icons. Like what, if you were Paul Hogan, and instead of pulling out a knife, what yep. would you pull out? What would be your symbol or your metaphor for? Systems change, would it be a plant or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a really complex question. I, mean, I cannot come with an easy idea, but I'm going to tell you a little example. Uh, I love birds. Yeah. And I was reading this book the other day uh, about the impact of Australian birds on, on the planet. So I, I just see these kind of guys, symbols, we're talking again about symbols. Paul Hogan just coming around covered with birds all over the place and saying, look, I'm losing my friends, man. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. You know, uh, the city is growing like crazy. We are just cutting down bush all over the place. We need to also think that we are destroying the habitat of so many beautiful species that we rely on. And once they're gone, what's going to happen? So I talk about symbols because they have the, 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 the power to influence our thinking. And this guy, I mean, I don't want him to be around with a machete, just, <laughs> you know. But try to, try to, again, we talk about narrative. If these, these kind of characters are able to go out there and influence us in a positive way. Well, Ellen's done that. Ellen MacArthur's done yeah. that. Yeah, oh, she's The great. story of sailing yeah. around the world. Yeah, she's great. And even the simplest metaphor in circular economy is a line. Yeah. yeah. And a circle. There you go. There you go. So, symbology. It's just symbology that brings me back. I was at the university last year, we had this amazing uh, class about symbology and how can that influence uh, political and social change. So back then, for example, the chimney was a symbol of progress. So you will see at the end of the Industrial Revolution, all over Europe, all these massive chimneys. It was like, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and then people That's used cool. to think there's something happening. There's people working, the Watching industry is moving. Yeah. Today is different because in which we see a chimney, we see smoke, we see smoke, we see pollution. You know, we see a lot of uh, uh, different Ma maybe solar panels now. Like yeah, exactly. Symbol. So that's yeah. that's the power of symbology, yeah. and we need now to find these figures and follow the people that are actually helping us to promote well-being, social yeah. well-being, yeah. health, uh, community well-being, political well-being. Because we have so much to learn. We think we know, but there's so much to learn. Yeah, one of my favorite podcasts. Um, so far, so I think this is the twelfth one I've done. It was with Georgina Camp from Hoover Social, Whoa. and the, the title of the episode was "Measuring the Well-being of the Planet." There you and go. she does a lot of work in New Zealand. Whoa, fantastic! Um, yeah, she's, I'm going to get her to speak. Yeah, I mean, come join us at a future meetup. I was actually thinking, mate, Dylan, you should just rent a band one day and just go on tour. It would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, why not? I'm all up for great ideas. Interviewing like that. people, <laughs> finding examples of this the phenomenon of circular economy. Yeah. Just go and explore Australia because I'm pretty sure there's so many beautiful things happening in Australia. If you come back, for example, to Adelaide, these guys uh, now um, recording that's 70% of food waste and turning into 
combos, tanigas, and so on. But go there, explore, go to Sydney, go yeah. to Melbourne, what's going on. And I think it's pretty, pretty much uh, a huge way of uh, positive movement. So. There's a couple more things I want to touch on. One, so just while we've got, because we've talked quite openly about lots of different things, but your area of expertise with circular bellinis um, and your sort of master's degree is, is food and resource management, yep. and you're really interested in cities. Yep. Do you want to maybe just talk about your passions and interests and maybe yep. deep dive more into the technical aspect of, you know, what does a circular city on food, and like currently it's, you know, we talked about this this morning as well around this paradigm shift from waste management yep. to resource management. Yep. We can talk a lot about it. I will try to summarize it briefly. The thing is, in Europe, for example, if you start uh, researching data, you will find that there is uh, this statistic showing us that there is about 80 million tons of waste of food a year. What do they say, like one third of all food is wasted? There you go, there you go. Even, even when it comes to Australia, it's, it's just about how we value things. In the city, we have to understand as citizens that the city is not sourcing anything. We are consuming resources. It's all what's happening, right? And the question is out there where resources are coming from and if these resources will be available for us all the time, especially knowing now that most of the, the, the human population is moving to, to urban areas and cities are growing uh, incredibly. So you talk about this urban sprawl, about this, uh, um, all these social phenomena that are affecting the way that cities are built. And now the perception, for example, of food and resources is that the city has to start building and finding ways to produce its own resources. That's why they talk about food is waste, or that's what they talk about closing the loop, that's what they talk about crowded to cattle, that's what they talk about industrial colony. That's why the city in itself has to be like a living organism. Yeah, that's, that's what I was, the way I was thinking. It's like, like the metabolism yes, of the city. Yes, the metabolism. And that's, that's, that's a metaphor that we use a lot in Circular Berlin because it's, the city is pretty much a living organism. If you really get out of the bubble of the city and you see what's going on there, it's just this massive it flows. flow of materials and networks and just people interacting every second, transforming the city. So how do we want the city to be? How we perceive the city? A city that a citizen goes to a restaurant and doesn't even know where the, city, the food is coming from or what's going to happen or who is cooking it. We did a, a really interesting research in, in Circular Berlin with uh, a couple of activities that we organized and we found out that we are definitely not aware about uh, where is our food coming from. Mm. It's one of the biggest challenges, isn't it? It's massive. Transparency. It's massive. It's massive. It's so conscious. now there's this, this really beautiful uh, wave of um, um, change which is thinking about regional, thinking about local, thinking about how the logistics are built, you know. So on that note, like one of the biggest, the best examples and the real, like agriculture is a huge part of the WA economy. And for me, it's, it's going to boom. Regenerative agriculture is going to boom. That's what I want to talk it about. It has to. Yeah. It has to. What's a, like, I think, and I'd love to have you back and learn more and, and connect the circular building around your expertise and your passion area of food and biomass. Mm -hmm. um, and there's already some great projects here like Carly Hardy and Cougars. Oh, she's doing great. Right. Um, but she's really struggled, I think, as well. Um, What's the regenerative, is there much work you're doing in Berlin and Germany around regenerative agriculture? Because that's really about redesigning the food system. Yes, you know. yes. Look, um, I don't like comparing mm. because it's always about different uh, circumstances, different scenarios, different historical backgrounds. But the thing is that Germans know what's going on. Yeah. And they think forward at least most of the population. So you go back, of course, you will still find this um, a very ancient way of doing agriculture, but now there's a lot of projects that are promoting a, a sustainable agriculture, which is a very innovative practice. And what you have to do is to start, a, a re, how do you say that in English? Actually? Regenerative. Re, exactly, regenerating the, 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 the properties of the soil, because we have, changed completely the structure of these small uh, uh, organic living particles in all these particular ecosystems. So they know already, and there's a lot of methodologies now that are being, that are uh, in place. You go, for example, go to South Germany and start talking to all the, the, the farmers and they are aware of the situation. And they use practices that help them, right, through different 
harvesting uh, cycles and different planting practices to see how nature behaves because nature is not the same that it was last year. It's in continuous change and we have to adapt to nature to give her or him the opportunity to, to, to recover. If you keep extracting resources like that, we know already that the speed of recovery of the nature is very slow in comparison of the way we extract the resources. So this regeneration needs a, a lot of work and it's happening. And we're gonna keep consuming food through the, until we are alive. But the space is being reduced, resources are being reduced, water is polluted, soil is polluted, and now is the best moment to use all the technology that is available to do the opposite. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanna to touch on is you know, just this week, so International Circular Cities Week, or the last week, um, Woolworths came out and announced that they were going to trial, and they've got a partnership with TerraCycle and Loop to trial reusables for the supermarket. Yeah. And they're, I don't, I don't personally shop at Woolworths, but a lot of people, a lot of Australians do. Or yeah. I, I do still occasionally, um, but I prefer to support, you know, the IGA's independence. Like I love um, source bog foods. Yeah. yeah. And I've got like, I'm trying to change my own habits. You know, we talked about, you know, the self work and always, I'm always growing and changing and, and seeing how can I embody practice circular economy in the home um, but the, the Woolworths are very linear food business right they're extracting lots of farmers being dis displaced yeah um, like what's the the challenge I think we talked about this of big businesses jumping on the sort of circular economy maybe misusing the term but you know we, we were talking about you know your um, before the pot we, we sat down to the pod around you know you'd love to move back to your home in Colombia yeah. and work there and I was you know we talked about coca-cola and well, where do you see that between like even your work in Circular Berlin, our work at Holonic, working with, with big businesses, working with small businesses, bringing people on the journey? Yeah, look, there's, there's two things here. There's the consumer and the producer, right? If there is a product, it's because there is a demand. Who is generating that demand? The consumer. So the consumer has to start demanding good quality products. And that's the beauty of, for example, Germany. You see this movement of very aware people saying, wait a second. Who is producing this? How is being produced? And how is the government responding or, or supporting this kind of methodologies? So us as a consumer have the option to have access to different things. Is it consumer or which is for me it's also a paradigm shift to user? Because we don't consume the only thing we should be consuming is food, but all the technical materials. It, it's a matter of right? how we interpret the words, right? Um, I see it right now at this point, I see it as consuming because we're not giving anything back. Yeah. Once we're capable to, to, to say, all right, I'm consuming a cup of coffee. But uh, am I consuming this cake cup or am I using it? You're using it. But Even that's, though when I buy it, I'm a consumer. That, that's, two, that's two different things and we can really uh, explore this uh, uh, in a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just because it's a, it's a really very, very interesting approach that you have there and probably uh, I will learn a lot from, from this. But just how I see it uh, in a more uh, uh, holistic way, in an in a engineering perception, we are just taking, taking. Even if you are using it, right, you are taking the material from somewhere. I love that and the metaphor of like you, you call the taking from her or him. You know, like the ecosystem, the planet that we're on is a it's a living being that we've just totally disrespected and crashed. That, that's it. So we are using it because until today we still see nature as a sort of resources. We don't see nature as something that we need. Yeah. It's like Damon Gamow, he touch, touches on this in a, a podcast with him a few episodes ago on um, like Mother Earth and even some of the rhetoric in economics and that, like we can, oh, it's just, it, it makes you like almost like cry. Like yeah, but, but, but look, there's something that I learned from my wife and, and I love her so much about this because I tend to focus too much on the negative, or I used to, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see the, the bigger picture. Winners will be optimists. Yes, there's so much going on there. We just have to see how we can contribute. All right. So again, okay, as a user or consumer, how can I demand that everything that is being offered to me is done in a way in which the business is growing, I'm consuming something that is uh, uh, fulfilling my satisfaction, but at the same time, I'm fulfilling the needs of nature. So we're closing the cycle because there is a misconception here when we come back about circular economy. Circular economy is not recycling. It's just one little part of it. It's the last It's just last the last step thing. In the... Yeah. And that's something that I think we have to start uh, 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 
discussing more here in, in, in Perth because I saw the last two months, even though there is a lot of uh, uh, intention to learn, we still see circular economy as recycling. So the fact that, for example, Woolworths is coming with this great idea of like packaging and... A lot of greenwashing, isn't it? It's complex. Yeah. It's complex. So it's a matter of education. Now we're in this transition process and we are, we are trying to understand the concept in itself. And I love this that you guys are doing in Cologne that take the circular away. Think about economy. What the hell is going on? And explain to me through numbers or a business model that these things actually more narratives sense. or stories or metaphors in yeah. a way that we can visualize it a both, symbol yeah. you know i almost like it's like both cold data and warm data yes yes exactly so please everybody who's listening to this <laughs> circular economy is not only recycling yeah it's, it's how we are able to to take the material flow and turn it into something that is uh, restorative so this is actually the first pod we've done really truly on a deep dive into circular economy uh, so I'd like to sort of encourage the listeners that if you're new to circular economy, uh, come down to uh, one of our circular economy Perth events, um, reach out to me. Um, we've got a lot of great resources on our website, um, our YouTube channel, but also on um, future podcasts, I'm going to sit down with my business partner and co-founder, Andy Thompson, um, and have a bit of a chat with him about circular economy 101. Yep. Um, so that's something we'll definitely get out in the future. Nicholas Sarmiento Sierra. Did I get that right again? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I love that. It's actually, yeah. I love pronouncing that. It's pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. Dude, I, I really don't have words to express how grateful I am. Uh, Thank you so much for opening right, this opportunity. Give, give you a big hug before you yeah, go, man, jump on the plane. Yeah, man, this is fantastic, tonight. and I really hope next year when I'm coming back or in two years, whatever, just to see this movement that is unstoppable. And yeah. thank you so much for uh, empowering people to do this. Thanks, man. On one last question, though, what what sort of because this the metaphor, the narrative for me with this podcast is Perth becoming a brilliant city, and I think yeah. this conversation this morning's been been really um, inspiring. Um, it's a great way to start the week, on Monday morning. <laughs> But for me, it's like Perth's well and truly on its way to becoming a brilliant and circular city. What one piece of advice do you have, you know, for from your experience with Circular Berlin, you're sort of, you've got a bit of this tether to Perth now, you want to come back. What do you say to, the, to someone who wants to help and be part of this sort of, you yeah. know, this, this systemic innovation, the systems change towards Perth becoming a brilliant and circular city or any city in the world for that matter? I, I keep it very simple and I'm not going to elaborate deep in this. Simply value what you have. I cannot say anything else. Just see around, think what's in your hands, think how lucky you are, and value it. Beautiful. Yeah. Because it's not gonna last longer if we don't respect it. So value what you have. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, mate. Oh, wow, that was awesome. That was fucking sick. Shift the button. Last it. We recorded it all, I really hope so. Uh, it's in Deutsch. Yeah, we got it all, we got it all. <laughs>